Hey, what up, y'all? Right here, Gray's Dynamics. I got another review here for you. What we're doing is we're looking at the Obvia Racing MC24 sim wheel. Now, for you guys know, I've been addicted to the DIY scene lately, and this is another wheel that I think you should definitely consider. But before we get to all that, I want to say thank you to Enrico, Alfredo, and Myron at Obvia Racing. These are the guys that have created the wheel. I have mainly been in contact with Enrico, and he's been a godsend in helping me understand how to do and put this together. Um, I'll be honest, this is a ver very easy wheel to put together. Um, but again, they're a new company. They were looking for feedback on the wheel, directions and how it was looking as far as a new person putting it together. Um, and we've been able to collaborate on quite a few things. Just how to make it look for a new person who's a noob like me to be able to assemble this wheel. And many of you guys may be noobs, you may be highly experienced, but it's always good to have feedback. And he's been really helpful for me as well as taking feedback for them. So I really appreciate that. So let's get right to it. First, let's talk about the price. So the first thing you need to do is go ahead and just buy the DIY files. The files are gonna cost you about 18 bucks uh, US dollars. So of course, depending on where you live, eh, that price may be different. For me, that was an easy purchase after I saw it, saw it on Facebook, was like, I want to build it. What do I need to do? Let's get the files. After that, then it was pricing it out to see how much it's going to cost. This will cost you anywhere from about $250 to $500. And that depends really on where you go. I went mostly high end and it still didn't cost me $500. Bucks, but I could see where somebody might do CNC aluminum for some of the parts, uh, mainly the enclosure. And that will, of course, cost you quite a bit more. Now, with that being said, that is totally a path you can take. Um, I think for most people, they'll go the 250 route, and it may be cheaper if you have a 3D printer, and you can print off many of these parts that will cost you maybe even cheaper than the 250. Um, and you'll have to evaluate what you want to do in the long run. But again, the price, as you can see, I have a spreadsheet over my head. This spreadsheet will kind of highlight the prices of what I spent. It cost me roughly about 370 some odd dollars uh, to do the entire build. And again, I went kind of pricey on some of the other parts. Um, but for me, it was totally worth it in the end. And I think depending on your build, it may be worth it for you to go even higher or even lower. So again, that will vary. So one of the things that I think I did that make it stand out, we'll talk about it now in the build. The build for me was quite easy. Um, putting everything together, getting all the parts, very simple. JLC PCB played a vital part in me getting all these parts, simply because at the end of the day, they're the cheapest option, especially in the US, where paying for anything to be CNC machined, anything to be 3D printed with MJF is going to cost you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars for simple things. Uh, just the MJF enclosure. I paid $42 at JLC PCB. It was going to cost me upwards of $700 to get it printed here. So again, these things will vary depending on where you live, but I can definitely say just go to JLC PCB unless you have somebody who can do it for you. And this was a hell of a difference of price when it came to buying one thing over the other. So the wheel weighs about 1,400 grams with my QR. I have an NRG style Moza QR. Um, without it, it's about 900 some odd grams. Um, and to be honest, that is extremely light. I have to tell you, it's probably the lightest wheel that I own. Um, the Balkan uh, Rev 3 is extremely light as well, but this is extremely light compared to just about every wheel you're going to own, especially if you take and maybe do some things that are lighter than my own. So one thing I will tell you, it is a carbon front. Um, I know a lot of people are like, well, where's the LEDs or all those other things? This is a five millimeter carbon front, so it's not going to bend or snap or break. So what you trade off and maybe some backlit buttons, you get in a more rigid wheel as opposed to something that's plastic. With that, I also went with the aluminum shifter. So you can't see them under here because on the back side, let's take a look at that. You'll see back here, there are my shifters. They are housed in carbon plates on both the top and bottom. But the enclosure and the paddle piece that attaches to the carbon fiber paddle, the arm essentially, are all aluminum CNC. I spent, as you can see on that spreadsheet we showed earlier, I spent about 70 bucks to get the enclosure, the arm, and both of these, all three of these encoders here on the front. The three encoders 
are CNC machined. They're matte black, anodized, and uh, bead blasted. So they have a nice texture to it. They feel absolutely awesome under thumb. You don't have to go that route, but that's what I did. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to spend the extra money. I really like the wheel. Let's do it. Uh, for the back enclosure, we did go with MJF. And again, this was about $42 to get the MJF. If you have a 3D printer, again, all of these parts can be printed 3D printed from the paddles all the way enclosures. All those can be printed by via 3D printer. But if you order the plate from Sunlike or Sunlife, what you'll happen is you'll get this front plate, you'll get the back plate, you'll get the housings, and you'll get the paddles. So why you would do it in 3D printed when you are going to get carbon paddles? It depends on what you want to spend and how much you can actually afford. So again, these things will vary with each and every person. And then I did do, as you can see, the custom molded grips. Um, they didn't come out absolutely perfect, but at the end of the day, they are significantly better than what I would call the Alcantara wrapped plastic. Um, for some of you, that is totally fine. If I have the opportunity to mold custom grips, I'm going to do that because, again, that is something that I think is worth it for me. It may not be worth it for you. You'll definitely have to choose. So let's look at the quality of the wheel. Now, with quality, we've talked about all the parts we've assembled and how it came together like a pizza pie. Now that we look at it, the quality is just really spot on, I have to say. One, I decided to go a little bit higher end on the wheel, so this is perfect for me. I will say that I should have gotten better buttons. Again, buttons have no click to it, and that's a mistake that I made. But with DIY wheels, you really can go with whatever quality you so choose, so that will depend. I can't tell you the quality of your wheel, but I can tell you the quality of mine. The quality is quite well. The 3D printed uh, enclosure looks absolutely perfect. The CNC machined uh, shifters, perfect. The carbon fibers cut, perfect. Um, the grips could be better. Again, the molds for it, I would definitely make some changes, but the quality of it feels great, especially compared to, you know, Alcantara or leather wrap plastic. I don't know about you, but I'd much rather have, you know, uh, resin molded grips. Um, but everything just, the quality would be what you decide. But just the basics. If you just get the carbon plates and print everything else off, which you absolutely can, um, it's going to be sturdy. It's going to be firm. It's not plastic. It's a five millimeter thick carbon plate. So you can't go wrong with that. But overall, good quality. I cannot complain. Everything that you see here, you have the choice of building or building something different. So in conclusion, I'd buy it. I put it on your short list as a DIY wheel that you want to build. I absolutely enjoy it. I think it's worth everything I've spent on it. Um, I'm going to upgrade the buttons because I think that's just a smart choice. I shouldn't have been cheap. You get what you pay for it, and the buttons aren't bad. They just aren't what I want them to be. And, you know, you live with that at the end. Um, I would recommend that he do better with the molds for the grips in two ways. One, make it so that you can eliminate the bubbles much easier because I have just bubbles everywhere. Um, doesn't affect the grips and how it feels. Um, it just doesn't look as pretty as, you know, you'd like it to look. So I would say that would be great to see. Um, and another thing I would also recommend is they need to be thicker. So, and by thicker, I mean from this side view, this perfect width here. But when you hold it here, and you wrap our hand around like you're going to see in this video here, it's not as comfortable, simply because I have small to medium hands, and it needs to be thicker. If it were thicker, I think it would feel much better in hand. It doesn't feel bad, don't get me wrong. It doesn't feel bad. But if you have larger hands in mind, you're definitely going to feel like you can just wrap the whole real wheel with one hand and drive, because it's they're not as big as I would like them to be. But other than that, if you have the ability to 3d print my guess is you possibly could just make these a little bit bigger and extend them out if you know how to do that stuff that's awesome it makes your life significantly easier for me i don't 
So I think that would be something I would recommend. Additionally, he has some other wheels coming. Look at these two. I think they're absolutely awesome. You guys know I love to drive the LMP3. And the fact that he has one coming, that is going to be my next purchase from Obvi Racing. I can tell you now, that is just a piece of heaven. And I would love to get it in the CNC machined, just how it looks there. I don't want any carbon fiber. I want it to be completely black. Um, yeah, that looks awesome. And that'll be my purchase here in the future. Um, but go ahead and check it out. Visit the website, actually the Etsy page down below. You'll see the link. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you think you're going to purchase it or what comments, feedback, or questions you have for me. As always, give me the thumbs up. I appreciate it. Let the algorithm know you actually kind of like me just a little bit. Um, if you think that I'm worthy of subscription, subscribe, join, become part of the team. And, you know, hopefully I have some things coming in the future that you like and turn notifications on because, well, if you subscribe, you kind of want to know when I have new things. Kind of would make sense. At least that's what I'm thinking. And last, I do have memberships. If you want to join and become part of Gray's Racers, go ahead and join. It's 99 cent a month. Nothing crazy. You get to see all of my videos before everybody else. Um, as I grow, hopefully, and get bigger, maybe I can always offer some more incentives to you. But as of now, that's pretty much it. You don't have to. You can always do this all for free. I appreciate you. Thank you for being the best part of Gray's Dynamics, and I will talk to you on the next one. Peace.